today. You are going to learn your first effect in After Effects. This project requires a lot of concentration. But be warned, your powers can be very dangerous if you are not careful. <sighs> Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial from marmoworld.com. My name is Matthias and in this Guru lesson I'll show you how to create the lightning effect that you have just seen. For this you first learn how to work with effects. Then you learn how to use keyframes to animate properties in After Effects. So let's start with the first part, applying effects. Okay, so here we are now in After Effects and the first thing we are going to do, of course, is to import our footage. Yeah? Therefore, we just take the file from the download and drag it here into our project, as we also did it uh, in the first lesson. And I hit again Return, while well, this is selected to rename it, and I call this now Guru Clip. And then I take this clip and drag it onto this symbol to create a new composition of the appropriate size and duration. Yeah? So I select it, drag it here, and now we have our composition, Guru Clip 2 in this case, and I again rename it to uh, Main Composition. And I call it Main Composition because in larger projects you will have uh, later many different compositions and some of them nested into other ones and so on. And so to do not lose the overview, it's a good idea uh, to uh, name them appropriately. Okay, so if we now take a look at this composition, we can see that we have here our Guru clip and that the only thing that is missing is this uh, lightning here uh, in the uh, that, that is happening there and for this lightning we are going uh, to apply an effect and effects are things that are applied in After Effects to your clips and that modify them yeah and you can access the effects by going here to effects and then you can see there is a, vi a variety of very different kinds of effects yeah so I won't start with the lightning effect that we actually need, but choose something simpler to explain you the general concept. And so what you, for example, have here are blur and sharpen effects. And we can, for example, now apply here some fast blur. And now we apply it and you see that our, uh, our uh, window here disappeared. And this is because here this new window effect controls popped up. And these effect controls now allow to define how the fast blur effect that we just applied is exactly working. So you can set all the options of this effect. To keep some space here, I click on, on this surface here and drag this window or this palette uh, to, to this area, yeah, such that we have again, uh, or such that we can view our composition here. So now we can have here our effect and here you see the result of the effect. Um, what I can do here is now, for example, increase the blurriness of this effect and you can immediately see what it is doing. Yeah? So blur effect just makes your image, of course, blurry. And you have some other options here, blur dimensions. You can, for example, say I only want to blur in a horizontal direction. Now you have just blurred like this, but not up and down. Yeah? You can also say only vertical blur uh, and here are some other options, uh, repeat edge pixels that are not so important for us at the moment. Important is just effects can be applied via this menu here and you just apply them to some clip here. Yeah? A second way to apply these effects is to go here to effects and presets. If you open this the first time, it loads a bit. Yeah? And then you find, I make this window a little bit larger, you also find here all the different categories of effects and you can also apply it from here. 
and here you have also an easy way to search through your effects. But uh, once you have applied them, you can choose here all the options of the effect. You can also deactivate the effect temporarily. And uh, one important thing is that effects are always applied to layers. Yeah, They are not applied to your entire composition or something like this. I mean, currently we have just this one layer, just this Google clip here inside. But if you have several layers, you must distinguish on which layer you apply your effect. You also find your effect if you click here on this triangle. And you remember in the first lesson, we had here just this transform property and nothing else, Yeah, where we had the position, anchor point, and so on of the clips. Now, since we applied an effect, we also have here this category effects. And in this category, we find our fast blur effect. And the options you can change here, you can in the same way also change here. Yeah, either you change the blurriness here. So let me enable the effect again. Either you change the blurriness here, or you can do exactly the same thing also here. So this is just another way of changing the same thing. And all options you can see that you find here are also available here. Okay, but as I said before, this fast blur effect is actually not the effect we are really interested in. So I'm going to delete it again by selecting it here and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. So now the effect is gone and also this category effect is here no more available since no effect is on this layer anymore. And the effect we are actually needing is effect generate and then we have under generate our, where is it, um, advanced lightning, yeah, here, generate advanced lightning. I click on it and you can see we have here such a nice uh, lightning effect. Um, the problem with this lightning is actually that uh, you see our clip disappeared, yeah, so the guru is no more visible, but only this lightning is visible. And this is because some effects are not actually modifying the clip they are applied to, but they are more replacing it. Yeah, in this case, if you apply a lightning effect, it totally replaces the clip you applied it on uh, and instead so creates this nice lightning here. And if you do not want this to be the to replace the guru clip, we should apply the effect actually on another layer. Yeah, we need kind of a dummy layer on top of our guru layer that then contains this lightning here. And so therefore I'm going to delete this again with a delete key. And now I go to layer, new. And now I can say we have a bunch of different kinds of layers that we can create. Yeah, we can create texts, we can create solids. Solids are just clips that are very boring, consist just of a solid color and nothing else. And this is exactly what we need because we are going to replace it anyway. So we do not need something fancy. There are other layer types like lights or cameras, which are important for 3D uh, layer stuff that we are going to discuss in later lessons. Null objects for parenting that we will also discuss later. So, uh, later. so very different kinds of uh, layers. For now, it's just important. If you need a boring layer that you just want to replace with some cool effect, take a solid. Yeah. For a solid, you can enter its size since the effect potentially might cover the entire composition. We want to have it the full size of the composition. So we make it comp size and the color we can choose arbitrarily. But in this case, it really doesn't matter since we are going to replace it. Yeah. But we call this then uh, lightning. Hit OK. Now you can see we have now these two layers, the lightning layer. Yeah, I can also so move it here. Let me just undo it and behind it, the guru clip. And now we apply the effect onto this lightning. So I go again to effect, generate advanced lightning. And now you can see the lightning ex uh, replaced this solid color layer and the guru clip is visible behind. Okay, this is already very nice. Uh, one thing that is not yet uh, correct is that the uh, lightning is now visible for the entire duration of the composition. Yeah? And unfortunately, there is not something like a start or end point for an effect. Yeah? Each effect takes as long or is active as long as the layer uh, that it 
lives on is existing so what we have to do therefore is to shorten our layer yeah so if i let my layer just start here the effect also just starts here so this means we need to move the beginning of the layer to the point where uh, here the lightning should occur i just zoom in here by scrolling with the mouse wheel yeah and let's say this is about the time where it should occur um like this and now we go to the point where the arms are lowered, lowered again, so around here. And then we set the end of the composition to that point. Actually, if you want to match precisely here the point where your uh, current time indicator is, a nice thing is you can press the shift key, keep it pressed, and then you can see here that it snaps onto this point if you come close to it. Yeah, this is a way to very precisely position many different things in After Effects. So Shift key activates kind of a snapping in many, many different situations worth uh, to remember. Okay, now we have our lightning only in this time here where we need it. And let me just zoom out again uh, with the mouse wheel. Um, now, of course, the lightning does not look yet as we want it to look. Yeah, so one thing that is not yet correct is its color, and we can do this here in this glow settings. In the glow, you can see we have here glow radius, glow opacity, and glow color. I just click here on this color and choose just some red. Yeah, looks much nicer in this situation here. Of course, this is a matter of taste. And then it should not be so intensive, so we can change its opacity. You can see here I can make it more intensive and less intensive. Let's put this to something around 30. And then we can say the radius. This is how, how much it glows. Uh, maybe this is more visible if I increase the opacity again. So let me just increase the opacity to 100%. And if we now change the radius, you can see that it lets it grow. Yeah. Uh, another thing, if you change here these properties, you can also keep the shift key pressed, which makes your changes much bigger. So if I now move this here without shift, you can see if I go up to here, it goes to 85, yeah, from 68 to 85. Now I do the same with the shift key pressed. And now I can see it goes up to here already up to a value of 220. Yeah, so if you need to do big changes, just keep the shift key pressed. Now I press it not anymore. And you can see I just can do finer, m smaller changes, yeah. Okay, but anyway, here I figured out that a value of 30 for the opacity and a value of 30 for the radius looks nice. So just subtile little uh, red glowing. And the next thing we want to change is, of course, the lightning should not look like this, but should start at this first finger and end at the second one. What we therefore need to change is the lightning type from direction to strike. Yeah. With strike, you have here this origin and direction point, and these determine where it comes from and where it goes to. Yeah? This is the first of these two points. I can just keep the mouse button pressed and, and move it here, and you can see that then these numbers here move accordingly. Yeah? So this is like with these numbers, you, you determine the starting point, and we want it to ha be at this finger here roughly. And then the direction, is this second point. And this should be here at the second finger. Yeah, This looks already much better. Again, I use a mouse wheel to, to zoom in here a bit. Like this. And now I can precisely position the lightning where the fingers uh, of the guru are. Okay, so let's take a look at a RAM preview of this. So I change here my work area to roughly the area around this effect. Go here to preview and click here. Now a preview is computed and you can see already a problem is that the lightning is not m moving. Yeah. So the lightning is not moving and what we can do for this is we now need to animate this start and end point uh, of the lightning to exactly follow the fingers. Yeah? And the problem is, well, if we just change these numbers here, we can just pick one value. Yeah? We can say, for example, okay, here when the, uh, when the lightning occurs, 
we set this exactly here and this exactly here. So let me just zoom in a little bit more. So now we can precisely put it at the fingertips. And now if you go to the end, let's say around here, I want this to be rather here yeah, and this to be rather here. So it moved a bit. And now we changed it, of course, this value for the entire time. Yeah. And you can see it just doesn't doesn't move with it. And if you want to, to animate these values here over time that they should change, then what you need are keyframes. And for this, we need to reveal the effect here in the timeline. And now we want to animate this origin point. And therefore, we go here to, to, to the beginning and click on this stopwatch. Yeah, and when I click on it, you can see here occurred something and also here some point occurred. And this point means the value we have here, this one, is now just defined for this yellow point in time. Yeah, So I can move it now, for example, here and you can see, okay, the point is still not yet moving, but now I can define a second value. Yeah, Let's say here at this point at the very end so around here and can say okay at the end it should be located here now we have two points and these two points have different values yeah two keyframes and if i move between them you can see now that the numbers here are actually changing so here the changes are very small therefore it is not uh, uh, very much noticeable but you can see that over time this point here moves a bit from left to right yeah because here we've set it a little bit more to the left and now it is traveling slowly here to the right. And then we can go here in the middle and say, okay, here in the middle, it needs to be actually a little bit more here, like this. Yeah, and now I can see that the point is following the finger as we keyframe it. And you can add here as many keyframes as you want and you can jump between the keyframes by clicking on these buttons. So here this means jump to the next keyframe on the right and here the next keyframe on the left. And if you go to some other point, you can also click here to create another keyframe. Yeah? Now another keyframe has been created at this position here. Okay, now we want to keyframe in the same way also this direction point, so this second point here. So we go here to, to the end, for example, click on the stopwatch, go a little bit more to the left and adjust it, go still a little bit more to the left and adjust it again and so on until here. And now if you do another ramp preview, you can see that the lightning is now following our fingers. Yeah. Okay, so now it is following, but the point is it is not yet really uh, moving. Yeah, uh, And for this, we have to animate also here the conductivity state. You can see if I move this, you can see the lightning moves very nicely. And the problem is just, okay, if I just pick here another value, it stays on this value for the entire time. Yeah, again no real movement of the lightning. So what we therefore need to do is also animate this conductivity state. So while the clip plays, it should animate in a similar way like I do it here manually. Yeah. So this means at the very beginning, it should, for example, have the value zero. And now I click here or also here to activate my keyframes and say, okay, at the very end, here, a few frames later, so it's like, how much later is it? Here we are at frame around 400, and here we are around frame 500. So let's say the conductivity state should be 100. So this means it slowly changes from zero you can can see it here so here it's unfortunately not animated but if i if you look here and scrub through time you can see that it slowly grows from 0 to 100 yeah which makes now the lightning 
move very nicely. Okay, so this was now the first time when this lightning occurred here. Yeah. And now remember that also a second time at around this point here uh the lightning should should occur again. And what we can therefore just do is of course we could do exactly the same thing again. Second time go to layer, new solid and so on, create it as the effect and all stuff like this. But what we can also do is just select this layer and go to edit duplicate or control D. And now we have an exact copy of our lightning and we can just move it where we want it to be. Yeah, so around here. And around here should should the lightning occur. And now again we just need to update our keyframes. I open here the effect. You can see now we have two different effects, the effect on this layer and the effect on this layer. And on the effect of this layer, we now want to, to change our keyframes so the conductivity state, so this movement of the lightning is, is perfectly nice, but the position of the fingers, of course, does not match. And to get rid of the old keyframes first, we can just click here and here to deactivate the keyframes. Yeah, now they are gone. And now we can click again to create two new keyframes and now again animate this here manually. So maybe here we just need to animate really the finger. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit. And uh, actually here the finger does not move very much at all, so maybe we don't need to keyframe much. And here when the, the finger is lowered, we can actually uh, already or like let's say here here it should end here the layer should end this is of course some some manual tweaking involved and again if you hit the shift key yeah you can snap it here this is also very useful for these keyframes you can see if i hold the shift key i can easily snap to exactly get to some keyframe so if i want to modify this keyframe i can just go there holding the shift key I need to select this property and make sure that not all these are yellow. So if just one is yellow, then you can exactly modify only this one. Otherwise you start modifying all the keyframes, which you usually do not want. So now we can keyframe this here very nice, step by step. And okay, I think you know now uh, in which direction this is going. It's just some fine tuning in the keyframing. And apart from this, we have now our final result here. Of course, this lightning effect or the blur effect are just two examples of how you can modify your clips. And there are many, many others. And the best way to learn them all is really just to explore them using the online help. So you go to help and then after effects help. And okay, um, here I have, for example, now the online help for CS5 and CS5.5, but all of them are quite similar. Uh, what you find there is also a section here about effects and animation presets. And what you find there is really an effect list and a detailed description of all the different effects and kinds of effects that are available. So it's really best to just look through all of these documentation and try them out, play around with them and see what you can do. And also remember that usually effects that you later create are not just applying a simple single effect, but a combination of various effects. So if you think of how to play with these effects, also start to try uh, combining them. Okay, I hope for all of this, for the exploration of these many different effects, I gave you a bit of a starting point today. I hope you liked it. And I also hope that you join in again for the next part of the Guru Lessons. My name is Matthias and this is a tutorial for marmoworld.com. <laughs>